We're starting to see Bluetooth 6.0 in new phones and earbuds and just like you, I'm curious. So I've done the research and let me tell you what are the updates that matter specifically for audio usage like your earbuds and headphones and there are pretty big changes you should be excited about. Let's get started. Selamat pagi. Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my Bluetooth 6.0 breakdown video. Basically, I never talked about the 5-point releases because they mostly focus on IoT, with the only audio-related update was at 5.2 with LE Audio and LC3 codec that brings insanely low latency performance. At this point, you see that a lot in dongle solutions like the Soundcore VRP10 that got 120 milliseconds in real-time gaming and 17 milliseconds in video. That's a full 100 milliseconds less than the best gaming mode out in the market right now. Unfortunately, outside of dongles, we don't see much support from phone manufacturers. Only Samsung and Pixel devices support LE Audio. Although many earbuds has it already, like Earfun and Moondrop stuff, most opted to keep it off by default and then you turn it on in the app when you need it. This adds friction and at the end of the day, no one is using this LC3, what's supposed to be the next gen codec, which I personally think should replace SPC AAC for good. But enough background, let's start talking about the five updated features that will improve your audio right now. And first and the most important one is called ISO AL, short for isochronous adaptation layer. This enables large data to be chopped up and sent in smaller packets then transferred through different channels in different time frame too so not only the packets arrive faster but they can navigate the super busy 2.4 gigahertz frequency better basically this means even lower latency and more reliable connection which is super important for audio streaming especially real-time gaming use cases moving on to the second feature we have channel sounding which is basically find my tech for tracking stuff this doesn't directly affect sound quality but it helps you locate those teeny tiny earbuds without any any extra hardware. Until now, we had far less accurate distance ranging by RSSI or signal strength. Then Bluetooth 5.1 added direction tracking down to five degrees accuracy. Then now with channel sounding on Bluetooth 6.0, it uses a more sophisticated round trip time, which works like a radar calculating the time it takes for a signal to bounce back or phase space ranging, where the distance between faces and frequency is calculated to judge the distance down to 50 centimeter accuracy. Granted, this is still less accurate than ultra wideband that can locate down to 10 centimeter accuracy, but a huge advantage is it doesn't need any extra hardware. Like in my country, Indonesia, I don't have UWB precision tracking because the government doesn't allow the use of the ultra wideband frequency, but Bluetooth has none of that problem. It's also baked to the standard, so every new Bluetooth device theoretically can be located without any extra cost. And the potential is huge. We can find our lost earbuds, peripherals like remote controls, mouse keyboards, I don't know. We can have cheaper Bluetooth based trackers, and it's also secure enough to work as a key to unlock cars and door locks. So super exciting stuff down the line, but that's all theory until it gets implemented. Moving on to the third feature, here we have DBAF or decision-based advertising filtering. Let's say you want to connect to your earbuds. You go to Bluetooth settings and found a gazillion devices in the list. You tap your earbuds to pair and sometimes it will take unusually long just to connect to the earbuds. This happens the worst in an electronic store where you have so many devices advertising their Bluetooth or possibly in a cafe as well. But even back at home with apartments and housing complexes, it's hard for the devices to find each other. DBAF fixes this by dividing Bluetooth LE advertisement into two channels, primary and secondary. So the data packets are separated into secondary channel and only access after a device decide that it's their interest in the primary channel, which is easier to sort through. Aside from saving battery and finding devices faster, you can also expect multi-point or switching between devices to be faster as well, which is always a good user experience upgrade. Okay, if you found this video helpful so far, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. I review tech and audio with focus on the most important things like performance and sound quality. So if that's up your alley, it'll be great to see you again in the future and yeah let's move on to the fourth new feature now which is a minor one but could potentially save battery and make our audio devices last longer which is called monitoring advertisers basically we have two bluetooth operating at the same time bluetooth classic with three megabit per second bandwidth and bluetooth le 
with one megabit per second bandwidth. This operates at a much lower power, thus the name low energy. And previously in Bluetooth LE, our devices only keep a duplicate copy of the Bluetooth Classic. So it doesn't know if something is in or out of range. And let's say you want to connect to an earbud through LE audio, especially when something is out of range, the earbud will have to spend energy scanning only to find out that the earbud is not there anymore. <laughs> Monitoring advertisers fixes that. Bluetooth LE now knows when something is in or out of range and only connects when possible. This potentially saves energy, although to be honest for audio use case, we only connect to the earbuds once in a while and these devices stay close to each other as long as we're listening. So it might not have that much of an impact with personal audio use. Finally, the last but not least feature at number five is LC3 Plus codec, a new codec that supports both high res and low latency performance. So up to 96 kilohertz and 32 bit with lossless streaming capability. And at the same time, having only seven milliseconds end to end latency, which is a huge improvement from normal gaming modes these days that hover around 50 milliseconds at best. However, keep in mind that we're talking just Bluetooth latency here. That's why we see 57 milliseconds where in my test, I take into account the phone latency, which is why you see 100, 200, 300 milliseconds numbers. So with this, I'm expecting sub 100 milliseconds latency on wireless earbuds, which is insane, almost imperceptible unless you're recording music and monitoring in real time. But the limitation is unlike LC3 that's baked into LE audio for free, this is a licensed codec. And just like LC3, we see it more often in dongles. And so far, HyperX, JBL, BNO, also AKG N5 Hybrid, as an example, already uses it with some wireless mics from Anchor and Sony as well. So we'll have to wait and see if it gains any traction. But yeah, those are the five new features you can expect from Bluetooth 6.0. Let me know what improvement you want to see the most. Forgive me if I make any mistakes, I would love to to learn more and just a sneak peek the new moon drop pill will have bluetooth 6.0 poco x7 pro also has it and theoretically snapdragon 8 elite also supports bluetooth 6.0 although many manufacturers still stuck with 5.4 instead most importantly have you tried le audio yet that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching i'm kenneth and i'll see you in the next one bye